Well, Alex, and we've been up in uh, uh, northern Alberta this last uh, couple weeks working with the SDX, and I wanted to review for some of our Xactrix owners how well this machine is working on big farms uh, of the Peace River. And um, there's been several SDXs converted to 60 feet as banders, and we've been able to uh, improve the uh, life of the uh, unit by using a large chrome insert in the uh, banding uh, unit uh, to provide uh, runs of up to 20,000 acres before service. These 60-foot machines, uh, and in this case a 62-footer, uh, are normally set on 12-inch band centers and uh, we add the Martin closing wheel as well as the, the new improved scraper and uh, this machine uh, is able to band with virtually no soil disturbance very very clean placement of the nutrients very uh, happy with the way the SDX has been performing uh, in, the, uh, north, in northern Alberta well let's go take a look at the opener and um, as you can see here um, this is the tool that's used for banding and now it's for banding and seeding and uh, you'll notice that the seed tube is missing um, we've removed that uh, and we have a diffuser seed release that releases the seed in a rearward direction and so we're using some of the same techniques of banding as far as the scraper is concerned, the same tool that can be utilized to uh, to actually band the crop and establish an excellent crop uh, of uh, spring wheat or winter wheat, garbanzo beans, even mustard. The diffuser is, is small enough that we can get mustard seed through the system. Here's an SDX uh, set up for seeding uh, with a yielder drill and uh, this has been a machine that's been somewhat problematic in the beginning but now we understand how to make this machine work. Here's the diffuser and the, the technical aspect of the unit and um, you can see the seed release is coming around the little red berries are being released rearwardly and it's diffused in 40,000 slots to get that seed to drop uh, right in a narrow uh, seed band that's about uh, three quarters of an inch in width. Uh, major improvement in endurance. Once again there are the uh, seed slots uh, about 40 thousandths in width and uh, they diffuse the air and yet allow the seed to drop uh, uniformly right into the bottom of the seed slot in a rearward direction and of course there's the TIO holder. So we can also band with this unit and we can also use starter 1034O uh, with the unit. So it has a lot of uh, powerful uh, combinations that can be utilized. The same machine can be used to band pre-plant for corn. It can be used to uh, seed uh, spring crops. Well, let's go take a look at what we did here to get it set up. Uh, we, of course, have the nylon set nuts that retain that scraper. Have to loosen those, get those off. We've got to get the seed tube out of there. So that's removed and uh, we learned over time that the seed tube was really a problem. And uh, once that seed tube's out of there, man, you can really lay the seed in there. Here we are getting ready to put the bracket on, uh, retain the spring. Mm -hmm. Seed tube's being re moved here in this picture. Very easy to get out of there. Might as well save it. Um, don't see any need for it but put her up there in the bin. Now the uh, mounting bracket for the spring group is being set into place. We use a pretty heavy duty uh, stainless steel spring and it's been a little uh, interesting to watch how this improved spring holds that scraper against the blade and um, that seems to help a lot in turning corners. That scraper is uh, in the shadow of the disc but the spring actually retains it right to the edge and the chrome bit is biting right into that carbon uh, blade. There is the nylon lock nuts um, and of course they've been a little difficult to set in the past with the old scraper design but now we have a flat surface to mount those nylon lock nuts on. Once again there's the scraper. Scraper spring being set.
front guard that keeps the corn stalks from uh, flying through or the sunflower stalks or cotton stalks especially keeps them away from the uh, opener seating area and that front shield is actually adjustable we've got a couple of nuts there that we can uh, slide that shield over here we are adjusting those nuts bringing that front guard uh, closer to the blade shields been adjusted now we're setting the scraper making sure that it engages the blade that's in the shadow getting the take up nuts to come in make sure the springs got a good spring pressure on the scraper the first two or three scrapers uh, takes a little while to get them all set but once you got that done you're set to go there's the line splice for the seed it's a one inch uh, line splice and of course your uh, polyphosphate line and your uh, NH3 line are moved up to the uh, frame point we mount the check valve up there on the top of the frame also one more view of that scraper how it sets in there how to set that scraper take up nut keep it loose so it's actually floating you can bang around in there another quick view of it actually that scraper that chrome inserts in the shadow of that blade so it really doesn't have to work that hard what we observed in the past with the old designs was that these openers could basically not turn they had to run straight as an arrow and the old scrapers would tend to wedge there you see the flat relief for the take up nuts aha there you go pretty much complete nice install first two or three are going to take a while after that will go like clockwork uh, get that old SDX seeding maybe as well as what the 1890 seeds we're pretty hopeful that this uh, new improvement on the SDX will outcompete the 1890 so thanks again and uh, Alex uh, I think we'll go on home and call it a day thank you <laughs>